this climate report for India, which looks at a period of 2021 to 2040, is attempting to do something which, uh, you know, which is very, makes this thing very real for all of, all of us today. It's quite clear that all of us are reading in the media, we are perhaps experiencing what we are thinking of as climate change. But uh, I don't think that uh, we are, all of us, and particularly in India, are really conscious of the extent of the changes that we'll have to deal with, you know, the kind of damages that it will do to society, to individuals, to families, to the economy. And most importantly, that there's not some distant thing that we're talking about. So all the climate stuff that we talk about, it tends to project way forward, you know, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years later, what will happen. But this is a reality of today. And which is why this report is looking from 2021 to 2040. So, and 2040 is not so far away. It's uh, just 16 years. So it's like saying 16 years ago, where were we? Now this makes it real. What is this report telling us? What is the report telling us? In some senses, what it is doing is, it's bringing to life with much greater immediacy in our immediate environment, all the things that we keep reading about. So for example, in this period, average temperatures in India are likely to rise by 1.5 degrees Celsius. The effect of that is, you might think, what is 1.5 degrees Celsius? But the effect of that is actually dramatic. And it's dramatic because, just think of it this way, that when 1.5 degrees Celsius is the average temperature rise, in many places, the minimum temperatures are rising. So whatever is your evening or night minimum temperatures, they're rising. Particularly, these projections suggest that in the Himalayas and the coastal regions, the minimum temperatures will rise. So if you imagine the minimum temperatures rising in the coastal and the Himalayan areas, what happens? What is the effect of that? Heat waves will rise. The number of heat waves, the intensity of heat waves will rise. So all of us are familiar that there'll be a, you know, a three-day period or five-day period in May in very many parts of the country where we say, it's a, oh, it's a heat wave and it's really hot and somehow we have to get through this. Now imagine if those heat waves are not four or five days, but they're eight or nine days. And it's not just once or twice that happens, but it happens four, five, six, seven times. And like, let me remind you, we are not talking about 2070 or 2090. We are talking about 16 years from now, within the next 16 years. And that's the thing that we can actually experience. Rainfall, India, Indian culture, Indian economy, Indian society. One of its fulcrums is the rainfall, the, the lovely, the beautiful monsoon that we live through, right? But precipitation, monsoon will change. And India, which is particularly, you know, particularly driven, it's like I said, the culture, the society, the economy is driven by the, the monsoon patterns. India will be particularly affected. So precipitation is going to increase on the average. It's going to increase 40 to 50% on the western side, perhaps 10%, 15% on the eastern side. Now, imagine that. Imagine if it's a 40-50% increase of precipitation on the western side, and not only is it an average increase, again, the extreme weather events, as they're called, and extreme weather events is just a sort of a, you know, sort of a technical fancy phrase for saying that, oh, if you were having so much of rainfall across 100 days, now that rainfall might fall across 40 days. It's the same amount of rainfall, but instead of falling across 100 days, it's falling in 40 days. So imagine the intensity of that rainfall, right? And we've been living through that. When you start projecting this with this kind of a time frame and with this kind of a resolution, and resolution again meaning, uh, you know, when you say all India, I mean, you know, we can't necessarily relate to it. When we say, well, you say around the city of Bangalore, or you say the city of Bombay or the coastal region of Odisha, then you will start sort of relating to it much more much more immediately, right? So while the average rainfall is going to increase on the western side by 40-50%, or is likely to increase by that, and uh, by about 10-15% on the eastern side of our country, but there'll be places where the rainfall will actually reduce. So it's a very complex situation. You'll have temperatures rising, you'll have precipitation increasing, and it's not just the average, they're getting concentrated more and more in a few days. And therefore, it has got to have a significant effect on the life, daily lives of people. 
and overall from a structural perspective on how our economy and society operates. I think that's very important, very, very critical. I mean, if you were to ask me, it's, I think, one of the defining challenges that humanity faces, Earth faces, but particularly a country like India, which is vulnerable from climate change in many more ways than some other countries. We must absolutely wake up to this reality and act with a great sense of urgency. We must also remember that when things of this nature happen, it's the more vulnerable, those who live in poverty, those who can't fend because they do not have the resources to fend for themselves, right? they are far more affected. So as much as we must grow and develop and we must become a more equal society, we may have, must have greater equity and justice, it has a direct linkage to the effect of climate change. Very direct. Effect. So our hope with this report is that we as Indians will be able to relate to this matter of climate change and how immediate it is for us, how it will affect us deeply and how it will affect our population even more than most parts of the world. And even within that, it will affect the vulnerable more. What greater call to, call to an action do we need? So we must, we must get together, policy, action on the ground, business, civil society, the general population. And we must restructure our infrastructure, our business practices, our governance, our education, awareness, media, to actually make sure that we get together behind this, what I think is perhaps the greatest challenge that humanity is facing right now.